Hey guys, welcome back. Um, so I got all of the, the goop on here. I've got like one and a half coats. I only second coated the flat parts because the pink was showing and I went around the edges and just kind of dabbed where I saw pink. You don't have to do two whole coats on this. The one thing I did do that I didn't talk about on here, I wasn't going to do this this time, but I actually put some sand in the goop for the second coat and put it on here. The reason I ended up having to do that is because, I don't know if you can even see it here, but the uh, spiral lines were showing real bad on this stuff. So I put the, the sand on here to try to give it some texture and hide some of that. So if you look at it from the front, it's not too, too bad. And we can do some other stuff to cover that up. Uh, when I was gooping this, it's a little hard to get down in here. You don't have to worry about getting way down in here and being perfect. There's still some pink, which you're never going to see on here, but there's still some pink down in there. doesn't really matter. Um, if you're concerned about it, goop this part before you glue the stuff, the tubes to it, and it won't be a problem. But it really doesn't matter. Um, I've still got some of the goop left over that I mixed in here. I actually used this same mix for both the coats. I went ahead and put it on and then I put some of this press seal stuff over the container and this stuff I've actually had this stuff keep to where I could use it 24 hours later. I had to add a little bit of water and mix it back up um, but if you keep it airtight it'll stay for a little while. I had to let this dry about two or three hours from the first coat so this was perfectly fine to use this again. Don't go throwing this stuff out. Just seal it up and you can use it for your second coat. Um, what I ended up doing when I, with the stuff that was left over is I just put some of this sand in it. And I got this sand at the dollar store. This whole thing of sand cost me a dollar. So I, you know, don't go out buying really expensive craft sand or anything. Just buy stuff at the dollar store. That's the best place to get things. Um, also, when you're painting terrain, at least the you know the major part of terrain and the goop and the the paint mixtures and washes and stuff, don't use GW or Reaper paints or any of that expensive stuff. Or well, I mean you can use that, but if you're going to do that, you probably ought to schedule a CAT scan. You, you use the cheap stuff, cheap inexpensive craft paint. Um, you can find this stuff at dollar stores sometimes too, and if you see some there, pick it up. Um, the other thing is, I told you that I got these, like four of these for a dollar. This is the one I used with the goop. I can still use this because when I got done gooping, um, I just went to the sink, you know, I rinsed the brush out, went to the sink, put a little soap in my hand and just rubbed the brush around. Now this brush is not good for really, you know, quality painting, but it's good enough for goop. I've had this brush using it for goop for over a year and it's still working. What that means is, yeah, it only costs a quarter or, you know, a pack of a dollar of these, but if I wasn't taking care of these brushes, I'd have to spend a dollar a month. That's $12 a year. It doesn't sound like much, but $12 will buy you a tub of flock. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind. Just take care of your stuff and you, you, you'll stretch your money a lot further. Um... So what, what we got to do now, now if you didn't get every little nook and cranny of pink covered in here, don't worry about it because we're going to go over this whole thing with a black wash anyway. So, I mean, there's still little bits of pink, little dots of pink showing up in some of these places. So that's our next step. So we're just going to do a black wash. And if you don't know what a wash is, it's basically really, really, really thin paint. It's like almost dirty water. In fact, Cam Lupian, I've actually seen him wash with the water he have been washing his brushes out in. So, you know, a little bit of paint, a lot of water. Stir it up.
Okay, and you can kind of see, I mean, that's really thin. So, paper towel. And we're just going to, you know, you just slop it on here. All you're trying to do, we're going to we're going to be highlighting with some more colors after this. So what we're trying to do is get the shadows down in here. This is also going to take care of, since it's so thin, it's going to go fill in all the pink parts that are still showing. So just slop it on here, uh, get it all over. This is the part where you really want to make sure you've covered all your pink parts, because uh, this is the stuff to do it with. So don't worry too much about getting way down inside here. I mean, just do the best you can with those things, but it's not a big deal, because nobody's going to see down in there. Um, so, uh, you know, make sure you get the edges where people can see, but other than that, I wouldn't worry too much about it. So I'll get this done and then I'll come back. Okay, guys, um, I got this done. It took me I, all 10 minutes to get this slopped on here and checked really good and, and made sure all the pink dots were gone and I got everything covered. Um... It, it's already starting to dry out, but this layer, um, you want to let this dry really, really good. I'm going to let it sit overnight before I do anything else with it um, because we're going to be overbrushing and dry brushing, and you don't want this wet while you're doing that. It'll mess things all up. So just let it sit overnight and dry really, really good. Um, or if you're not patient enough, get a hair dryer or something, set it out in the sun, um, but make sure it's really, really dry. It's probably going to be Tuesday or Wednesday before I can get another video up, the next part. So in the meantime, if you want to prep for that, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be using some different shades of gray to overbrush and dry brush and highlight this stuff. I would highly recommend that you actually get some pre-mixed different shades of gray. I've got a dark gray, a medium gray, and one that's just called gray. That's a pretty, pretty light color. Um, if you're going to use black and white to mix your different shades of gray, you're going to have to keep track of exactly how much you're mixing because what I found out the hard way because I've done this is you get halfway through highlighting, you run out of the color you've mixed, and you got to mix it up again and it better match or it's going to look weird. So it's much easier just to get the pre-mixed colors in, in I, I'm going to use three different shades and white. Um, I'm also going to be using a little bit of yellow, so you may want to pick up some yellow if you're going to do this. Um, the yellow is just to kind of get um, some little sun highlights on this. Um, it's barely noticeable. I did that on the other one, um, and you probably you probably wouldn't even pick up on camera. But um, So you don't have to do it, but I like it because it gets just a little bit of color in there. So I will uh, see you guys in a few days.